we live shrinath you can go okay all right um thank you everyone for joining us a uh, very good evening to all of you um this is our second webinar in fact in two weeks on the plaksha tech leaders fellowship and with the round one deadline two days away on april 22 we hope um this is a good chance to answer all your questions and to clarify anything that you have on the fellowship um so without further ado given we have a packed session i want to introduce the two people um uh, from uh, from the fellowship that have joined us today first up is mr ananda sen gupta ananda has for the last two months uh, been spearheading the academic and the curriculum part of the fellowship he he's been doing this sort of the magic time he's been able to create really uh, because he's got a full time job at nagaro as a vp of pre sales not only that he runs his own startup uh, a healthcare startup called track my beat so uh, the star studded faculty lineup you see on our website is um, largely thanks to him and all the effort he's put in uh, over the last two months so anandho thank you so much for joining us today next up is uh, mr vinit gupta if you are at all familiar with the education space in india we need thus a need an introduction we need back in 2007 was very instrumental in setting up ashoka university and not just that he went on to become the founding pro vice chancellor at ashoka university and uh, we need again did this uh, despite running a test prep company that could be familiar to most of you called jambori and uh, for the last two years we need this uh, one of our early founders at plaksha and has been uh, has been instrumental again in setting up something in the technology space um, after after what ashoka has done to the liberal arts space so we need thank you thank you so much for joining um, with that said and without further ado i will uh, leave it to vinit and ananda to take over thank you shrinath and uh, my pleasure to join this webinar just as a way of testing it some of you we can we can understand if you make a comment so can all of us hear you can you hear us if some of you can't then can you type out a message quickly just want to make sure the technology part is working fine yeah samrit can you yeah okay so let me get started and uh, thank shrinath for that introduction uh the tech leaders fellowship in some manner is a precursor to the launch of plaksha university and plaksha university is being set up by entrepreneur and business you need to mute your connection yeah 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 i am doing that just give me one more okay thank you let me start again so praksha university is being set up by business leaders and entrepreneurs in india uh, and the tech leaders fellowship in some sense is a precursor to the university praksha university much like ashoka is a collaborative effort it's a collaborative philanthropic effort which means that the university really does not belong to one person or one individual and a number of people come together to set up the university while ashoka today has corporate leaders and business leaders from around india who have come together to set it up plaksha is very similar in character and shrinath if you can have the second slide which has the list of founders anand i will request you to mute your connection to shrinath can we get the yeah and we can't see the screen sorry you couldn't see the screen yeah can you just take a minute to yeah, i'm sorry let me try that okay so this is pretty much the list of people who've come together to set up plaksha uh, shrinath mute your connection again please uh, 
Thank you. Now, if you see the list, uh, there are people who've founded Tech Mahindra, the founder of Nagaro, which is an IT company based out of Gurgaon, the CEO of Nokri.com and Foedge, Hitesh, is a part of the group. Uh, Mohit, who is a part of Genpact and a founding member, now runs a company called Viftera, the Asia chairman of BCG, the Boston Consulting Group, Neera Jagarwal, he's part of the group. Ramod Basin founded Genpact and is a very eminent business leader. Then some people from Mumbai, Nitin Malhan, who was the found managing director of Warburg Pinkers in India, now started his own private equity fund. Uh, Mr. Vedyanathan, who's the founder and chairman of Capital First, some entrepreneurs from Bangalore, very exciting entrepreneurs from the US, Ashish Gupta, who set up this fund called Helion, Rakesh Jaggi, who's a president with Shlambaje, uh, Ruchit Gadura, who's with Contic, Gagan Hastir, who's the VP for content engineering at Netflix, Sunny Gupta, who's the CEO of Aptio, some founders based out of Singapore, again, private equity venture capital profile. Founders in UK and Chandigarh, and I, I, I don't want to go through the whole list, but in some sense, uh, and these names have not been put here just to sort of showcase, but these are people who are actually putting money to set up Laksha. These are people who are also putting money to run the Tech Leaders Fellowship. Each of them is committed financially. Each of them is committed in a manner that they want to see the next generation of technology leaders emerge from India. And Plaksha's vision is really centered around some of these principles. How do we reimagine and reinvent technology and engineering education for the 21st century? Can we create a blueprint for an outstanding engineering and technology university in India, which other universities in India and the world can emulate? Some of us had the benefit of an outstanding engineering education during our undergraduate time. And when we think an engineering education in the 21st century look like get some answers first we feel that the engineering education of the 21st century has to be far more experiential so far more project based and hence even if you experience challenge lab so we want to make the education much more experiential more emphasis on, on innovation and solving real world problems so not only learning engineering and technology, but also learning how to apply that to real world problems. And during the course of the Tech Leaders Fellowship, there is a there is substantial emphasis on how do you apply this education to solve challenges in industry, to solve challenges in healthcare, to solve challenges of sustainability and many more. So very real world application oriented education. We also believe that an education in engineering essentially also needs a strong focus on design, understanding what the users want. So bringing in a strong design sensitivity, design thinking right from day one. And even if we, if we apply the same principles to the Tech Leaders Fellowship, you see an element of design thinking and design based education coming in right from the beginning. So that's a strong component of the Plaksha education too. And of course, all of this is done in the backdrop of outstanding faculty. Uh, whether and all of the institutions that some of these founders have been associated with. College of being a key. Around the world to sort of try to get some of the best people in data sciences, AI, machine learning as a part of this program. So. Uh, whether it's Ashoka, Plaksha, the Tech Leaders Fellowship, the bar on faculty is very, very high. Before I hand over to Anandu and Shrinath, if you can change the slide, uh, I think sort of the, the as a part of institution building, one of the things we have been, one of the things we've been very conscious of also is whom do we partner with? So Plaksha already partners with Berkeley. The University of California, Berkeley, which probably doesn't need an introduction. We partner with SRI International, which was earlier called Stanford Research Institute. And we also partner with Purdue. Purdue and Berkeley both are amongst the top 10 engineering universities in the US. And I do want to emphasize that 
in the Tech Leaders Fellowship. Uh, while a strong component of the fellowship is about data science, machine learning, deep learning, but an equally substantial part of the fellowship is about developing your leadership quotient. And this question can often get asked that well, how do you define leadership or what is leadership? And I would say that leadership today is really the leadership of yourself. How do you learn to yourself? And within that, there are various questions. Understanding your strengths and weaknesses, understanding what motivates you, opening up your blind spots, taking on challenges that are bigger than yourself. I personally do believe that these elements of understanding yourself and leading yourself are sort of the foundations of leadership. And what you go on and do in your careers in a large part rests on this foundation. So understanding and learning engineering and technology is important. Its application is important. But what is also important is learning to lead yourself. So hence, these elements of the fellowship come together in a very, very exciting one year program, uh, which is being launched in India for the first time. Shrinath, next slide, please. Uh, so while Ananda will talk a little bit in more detail about the faculty who are going to be teaching at the fellowship, this, the advisory board is the Plaksha advisory board. Uh, Shankar Shastri stepped down as Dean of Engineering at Berkeley just recently. James Holloway is a very, very senior faculty member and now Vice Professor for Global Engagement at Michigan. Ashish Nanda was former director of IIM Ahmedabad, so really bringing in the leadership management perspective. Sharad Malik is Departmental Chair of Electrical Engineering at Princeton. Anant Agarwal probably doesn't need an introduction, CEO of FedEx. Ian Jain was former Vice Chancellor of its Pilani and Deputy Director at Delhi. Arvind Raman, Senior Associate Dean from Purdue. Next, Shirina. So at this stage, I think I've sort of given you a precursor and a sort of flavor on what the Tech Leaders Fellowship is all about. Let me hand over to Anando. Uh, who can take you through the curriculum, the faculty, and I'll then come back to talk a little bit about careers. Over to you, Nandu. Thanks, Vineet. So um, I think uh, one of the we are really excited with this one-year program that we have designed, and the interesting thing part of it is uh, it is focused on looking at postgraduate people uh, first of all. Uh, the fundamental idea behind that is we wanted to first start with uh, people we can probably help in choosing their longer term direction and how uh, giving the right type of inputs uh, can prepare them better for the world. Uh, as you saw that we have 45 plus founders and all of them are uh, leaders in their various fields at various corporate organizations, entrepreneurs, they themselves are entrepreneurs or serial entrepreneurs sometimes and very successful at it. And so when we talked amongst ourselves and tried to understand what do they need, we felt this course will really help. And that's what's behind the design. Uh, next slide, please. So this is uh, being designed with, in partnership uh, with Sutarja Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology at Berkeley. Uh, and of course, you saw Vinny talking about uh, our longer deep partnership with UC Berkeley on this. Next slide. So let me talk a little bit about the program structure. So the point of this is really preparing uh, all the students who will come to this program for going out there and being able to solve real problems. And to do that, normally in engineering courses, you would have probably taken a lot of courses and tried to understand how to uh, solve technical problems. But here, our goal was to create you for the world. So you see, fundamentally, we have a technology core, which is artificial intelligence and machine learning. But it is strongly supported by design and systems thinking, which means design thinking is the way to look at the problems and how to break it up into components that you can address it rightly. And systems thinking is the way when you finally end up designing a solution that you have to think into. And for example, when you think of, let's say, are you going to give a technology solution in, in the hands of someone 
would it be in the form of a mobile application? And if it is, that still needs a very strong backend and in a scalable fashion, and so on and so forth, so that they can really use the solution, for example. So this would be what are the two strong components of the te technical aspects. But this is continuously supported through a series of uh, grand challenge lecture lectures that will come through, which will be spoken out by a number of uh, senior people coming from industry or academia who will talk about problems that are being faced in the real world and which can be addressed perhaps through all the different technology pieces that you will be learning throughout this program. And other than that, we will also bring in uh, business leaders who will come and talk about, you know, sometimes talking about how to uh, build large businesses, how to start from small, how to perhaps look at a problem in a very different way. So we'll really have people addressing the social aspects of it, we'll, uh, people ask, uh, addressing the uh, technical challenges, the technology challenges the world is facing, um, the overall impact that we can make. And that's the interesting part of this program. And, and then Vinit talked uh, very seriously about the aspects of leadership and mentorship. Basically here what we want is people uh, be able to reflect and try to understand how they can become great leaders. And we'll have mentors who will come and speak with each one of you individually and spend time with you to help you uh, grow. Now, as you've gone uh, learning through this grand challenges, uh, understanding the problems to, uh, you need to solve, we then uh, go into a the concept of called a challenge lab. And this challenge lab is a way to look at that each of you could become an entrepreneur as if for a short period of time. And in this period, you will take a problem, design a solution, and try to, as if you're going to start a company in that area. So what that gives you is an opportunity to, again, uh, one, think like an entrepreneur, think end to end about a problem, uh, think of how it is going to impact the customers that you're going to uh, bring it to, be it the government, be it the people, or be it other companies, and then uh, try to launch that company. And this will be, again, strongly mentored by uh, groups of people who would be, again, entrepreneurs or business leaders or even uh, academics who might, if in case you're looking at a research problem, for example. Finally, we uh, move into a capstone project. And this one is something that the idea is that you are probably looking at your career at, this, at some point and you are trying to see what you want to go into. And so you have an opportunity to work with a leading company or you could work with a leading professor in a research area. And that could be, again, anywhere in the world. We talked about some of our relationships. So some of these projects could be in Purdue, some of them in Berkeley. Some of them could be other universities, which we will slowly discuss over time. And again, we'll have this chance for each of you to then work in groups or teams where you will then spend about eight weeks on site. Again, it could be at the university site, or it could be with a company. Uh, but you will also prepare beforehand. So this is not a general internship. This is actually taking a problem that will be given by this uh, an organization or a professor, which will work first plan, design, and then finally go and implement. And that's the fundamental idea of the capstone. And this is what you're going to run from August to June of uh, over the next year. Right? And though I, I just wanted to take a break for quick questions, if that's yes. so uh, so we already have, we already have one, and you know you can keep typing your questions as you are hearing Anandu and I speak. But meanwhile, I want to take up one question from Kanchan, uh, where she is asking really the difference between a master's program and the certificate program that we are offering. So let me answer that. That's a great question. So the Tech Leaders Fellowship, in all a sense, is equivalent to a master's program. Now, the only reason we can't give you a master's degree at this stage is because in India, the UGC does not mandate for us to give you a master's degree in one year, right? So, so we are giving you a certificate, but it is equivalent to a master's program. I mean, and you know, the, there are multiple examples. When you look at the Indian School of Business for their one year, 
although the world recognizes it as an MBA, they can't give a master's of business degree. I mean, it's, it's a certificate degree. And there are multiple such examples. Now, I think the other part, what is the value of a certificate program versus a master's? I think two things. If you were to join industry and if you were to work in industry, I think the industry is going to value the courses and what you have studied during this program. And I'm quite sure that industry will value it as much as they value a master's degree. We already have great interest from corporates and some leading companies throughout India who are just waiting to look at what are the sort of graduates who come out of this program. And these are companies like Google, IBM, BCG, etc. The second question could be, let's say, if you don't want to work in a corporate, but you want to go for higher studies. Again, I believe that most universities abroad, and especially this Plaksha Tech Leaders Fellowship Program, because it is going to be co-signed by UC Berkeley, when you apply abroad, it will be considered as an equivalent of the master's. Now, we'll have to do more work. We'll have to communicate with these universities. But I'm pretty sure that when you apply abroad for a PhD or a or higher studies or or you know any such program, I think the tech leaders will be considered equivalent. However, technically, yes, you are right. You will be awarded a certificate and not a master's degree. So that's the answer to the first question. Uh, Anando, I don't know if you want to add something to what I said, but I can then otherwise take up the second one. No, that's fine. Go ahead. If a person is not from software engineering background, are you eligible to apply? This is a question which has been asked by Nageshwar. And Anando, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Um, so Nageshwar, this is a very important aspect. Uh, I strongly believe uh, that one does not need to have a computer science degree of, or any such programming, deep programming knowledge to get into the, uh, the area of AIML and also the way we are teaching this program. What you really need here is the willingness and the ability to learn. Uh, yes, we this for this program, for the one-year program, we have actually asked that people come with a math or science or an engineering background. And the reason for that is there's a substantial amount of mathematics that is required. And that might be a little hard for somebody just coming in from a humanities background and learning uh, at a super fast pace. As you know, understood already from what Vineet said, this is a little bit of a compressed master's program. And so the learning curve will be high enough. So trying to learn mathematics while on the way, it will be pretty hard. That's about all. You absolutely do not need to have a computer science degree. That's, I can tell you right away. Uh, and that's, that's how we can, I'm sure it will be, you will be quite successful even if you don't have one. Do you see any other questions, Vinit? And that doesn't mean you have to be a software engineer. Moving on to the third question, which is from Advitya, uh, who's asking whether the US-based faculty are going to be delivering lectures online or in person. So the good news is that each of them who's listed on the website is going to be here in person. So people are going to be coming in from a duration of one week to six weeks. Some are coming in for three weeks, some for four weeks, some for six weeks. But each of them is going to be here in person. Absolutely. And each of them who are listed there are delivering a full course equivalent. I mean, this is really a very exciting lineup. Are there any other questions? OK, there's one more question from Anand. How many people will get selected? Will these students get placed through this program at the end? So, Anand, this, this information is there on the website already that we are the first cohort. We are looking between 60 fellows. We can take it up to 70 if we find some very exciting applications. Uh, and already the application pool is looking nice. The second answer, yes, you will be placed during the fellowship. The organization is recruiting some of them who've already committed are the Boston Consulting Group, organizations like Google, InfoEdge, Fractal, Nagaro, and many more are getting lined up. Clicks Capital. Tech so Mahindra. Will, 
Tech Mahindra. So you will be placed during the fellowship. Let's keep going, uh, Nando, and then we'll take up the next set of questions maybe in five minutes. Sounds good. All right, next slide, please. So this uh, slide just gives you an example of projects. So I told you that the UC Berkeley uh, is very strongly linked to us, and they're guiding, uh, in fact, providing a lot of guidance to the program. So these are examples of Challenge Lab projects that they have taken up. And I just wanted to show this to give just some perspective so for example, looking at detection of fake news, prediction of uh, pricing for a particular industry, uh, for applying AI for crime detection, traffic guidance, medical diagnostics. So there will be all of these different vertical spaces that we'll have uh, the challenge lab topics chosen from, and we'll have specific mentors to guide the teams. So typically the challenge lab will be uh, made up of teams of about four to five students, and they will work together on a project so that this is this becomes successful. And we'll have to spend our time uh, during uh, the initial months to help you choose these teams and also teach you how to go about understanding the group dynamics and how to work in teams. Next slide, please. So let's talk a little bit about the faculty. And um, I will say that I've been really, really excited by the fact that I had the opportunity to speak with uh, and possibly meet with each of these uh, faculty members. And what's exciting is we have Dr. Devras Shah, who heads the AI uh, program at MIT, will actually come and teach a few weeks, two weeks at the center here, at the program here. Then we have Dr. Jitesh Panchal from Purdue, uh, who will come and actually talk about design thinking and how about going around designing. And we have Dr. Ravi, Ravi Kothari here. Well, Dr. Kothari has uh, worked with IBM for more than 20 years and a brilliant person who has actually been teaching the AI program uh, and the courses at Ashoka University at present. So, and if you see on the other side, we have Dr. Nita Goyal, who actually works with Google's uh, the uh, Google Brain side of things. So you actually practices AI uh, work. So it's just tremendously exciting that we have so many uh, really exciting people. Go to the next slide, please. And here you can uh, look at a few more names. We have got uh, actually James Weimer, who you seeing the name on, on the screen. He is actually working in the space of IoT in this uh, in medical devices and the medical space so he will come and talk about applications using iot and ai and also talk about some of the design aspects uh, and the ethical design aspects of that you've got jimmy uh, james shanahan who actually uh, will come and who teaches uh, online um, ai uh, ai program at uc berkeley so and, and really that's a stellar faculty as i mentioned before and we will really have a chance for every one of you to meet them in person. The other exciting part of it is some of the faculty members are also going to offer research projects for the students back at their institutes. And they might, uh, so you will have the opportunity to interact with them and uh, request that a, a chance to work with them. So the capstone, as I mentioned, is uh, the option is to work with the industry or academia. And there, what you'll have a chance is to actually work with a professor on a real research paper and hopefully probably get published at some point. All right, next slide, please. So, uh, Vinit, uh, maybe you can also talk about this a little bit. So we'll go back and forth. And right. uh, just go through the animation and close the animation, Srinath. Just click one more time. Um, so go ahead, Vinit. Right, I think this is uh, an obvious question to ask. What happens after you attend the Technology Leaders Fellowship? Uh, and while I think the world is a free place and you are free to do whatever you like, but I personally believe that your career is significantly enhanced. Uh, we are not only looking at you to play critical roles in organizations, but we are also looking that through this fellowship, you can expand and enhance your career. 
we believe that graduates of this program will eventually take on leadership positions in technology companies uh, some of you are already entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs uh, i think this is an exciting place it allows you to apply technology to solve real problems it allows you to be mentored by great entrepreneurs it gives you access to people it makes you understand how to pitch your venture it starts to make you think about how do you design for the user so i think a great program in that sense and then lastly if you also want to do research at a top university i think the exposure you are getting to the sort of faculty who come at the tlf helps you build a network helps you understand what are the right courses to study you can get some exciting recommendations be an entrepreneur or go for higher studies i think tlf will offer exciting opportunities i just want to take a break at this moment because we have many more questions coming up i'll take up this question from ankur who says that please elaborate on the kind of exposure to design thinking that is planned and i'll just quickly take a shot at it and then anandu can sort of come in uh, so right in the first term program starts on august 1 and anandu spoke of dr panchal from purdue so right in term 1 we have a course on design thinking right so really getting into the meat of how do you really start designing from the perspective of the user uh and then uh this will be followed by and that is still not finalized which term but probably in term 4 or 5 we get more faculty on design Uh, and towards the end also so i believe there would be two to three courses uh, around design thinking uh, and anando just correct me if i'm right or if you want yeah actually in fact it's the exciting part is we will not take design thinking at multiple levels so we'll talk about design ethics this is another course that will also be the first term then we'll have uh, something on design safety uh, and the impact of design so we'll have multiple courses at different times and again looking at different vertical spaces as well so the idea is it will give you a comprehensive understanding second thing is you probably i want you to know what is design thinking perhaps about one is understand the perspective of users also to understand how to design comprehensively and also break some of the barriers that some of us may have which is sometimes like a question even to think that maybe i cannot design well because i don't know computer computer science so would i be the right person to design something in the computer science space the answer is absolutely yes and that's there are some of the things that you will really come to see uh, in real life when you attend these courses next question vinidhi on mute yeah i'll take the next there's a question from pavan who says i'm currently at the yif i have a background in engineering and really interested in machine learning is this program suitable to me and i think kanchan parchani has a similar question she is saying do you think tlf may be slightly challenging to those who have never been exposed to machine learning so i i think again going back to what anandu said uh so pavan you are an engineer i'm sure you'll do well as long as you have a background in math and probability statistics some of those linear algebra and you know some programming you'll be fine and same content for you uh, all we are looking for is a background in math and programming right uh, of course we want you to be intellectually curious and hungry and want to study hard but even if you have not studied machine learning earlier that is fine so i hope that answers both questions pavan and kanchan and anand you want to add yeah i want to add a very small thing so we actually under appreciate also that people will not have background and we uh, to so the way it is designed is first term we actually first uh, will have a course on mathematics for ai and secondly we will also have a programming course for python uh, topics which will be taught by somebody from google so the whole point is we will prepare you and the reason why we have chosen faculty that we have chosen you'll see is because we want those faculty members already understand what is required when they're going somebody is going from uh, not enough knowledge in that space into becoming an ai ml uh, designer at least and so the point i'm trying to make here is you will be taught these 
building blocks till you go deeper into machine learning. So machine learning or neural networks and the space is in the second half of the second course. The first course will be understanding the fundamentals. So we will have a multiple steps on the way. So it will not be a, you know thrown into machine learning and go figure it out yourself. Absolutely not. And the whole point, and you must understand that we are thinking about this continuously and we have designed it according to uh, the fundamental requirement that this should be perfectly fine for somebody who understands mathematics well and who is willing to learn programming. And that's really what is required for us. Thanks, Nadu. The next question is from Anushkrit. OK, I like this question. Will this, will this program provide us an edge with venture capitalists while procuring funding? OK, now. Really will depend on you. What is your project plan? What is your pitch? Uh, how does your venture look, right? But yes, it. I mean, compared to wherever you are, it is giving you access to 45 founders. I know at least six or seven of them are in the whole space of private equity, venture capital. Uh, there are some other vendor, when, uh, entrepreneurs in the list who also invest in ventures. So yes, it will give you access to more people. It will give you more opportunities to present your plan. Now, whether you get funding is, of course, also going to depend on how you pitch, what your plan is, etc. But yes, it, it does expand your financially. Yeah, I have nothing more to add. That's it, really. I mean, okay, funding, now, funding, funding is, depends on what your plan is. So that it also depends on the power of that. But everything else surrounding it, which is the whole ecosystem that goes with it, I think we have we provide in this program. Absolutely. OK, maybe Nando, you can take this one. This is from Shadab. Since this program is full time, we will be leaving our job and joining this. Is there any opportunity to work as TA or something to support our family? So the uh, answer is yes. Uh, having said that, you will still have to prove yourself that whether you are can, can be a TA. So I don't know your background. And I'm not going to comment on anything right now because you have to go through the application process. You have to also apply as a TA, and then we can have a detailed conversation on it. But uh, understand this course is quite intense. So if you want to be TA and do the course at the same time, you will really have to work at a different level. So please be prepared for that then. And uh, so all of that is fine. Uh, yes, the TA does have a salary. So yes, there is a way to support yourself. but Please understand that it will. It is going to be a pretty hard journey. Yeah, I, I would second that, Shadab. So, you know, it's going to be tough to be a TA and do the program. So, just keep that in mind. Okay, the next one is from Susmeet, who says, "Will the university help a student attain a capstone project in a particular niche that the student is interested in?" My sense is, yes, we will try to understand what you are keen on. But we also want to evaluate capstones the, for the merit of the project. And you are working in teams, right? So you'd be put in teams of four or five people each for a particular capstone project. While we can give due consideration to what you want and try to match it. But we do want to make sure that the company is credible, the project is credible. So net net, yes, it depends on whether we can get something credible in the sort of domain you're looking at and whether there are other team members who are as excited to do that as you are. So, uh, Anando, if you want to add something. No, I think uh, we will consider everything. So that's about all. Uh, you will have the freedom to come and discuss it. Uh, you understand that there will be mentors in the program, so you'll have a chance to talk to those mentors, evaluate that what you're suggesting is worthy of it or not, and finally, again, what is the final goal? You have to, you can see the list right there. You, want to, you can choose to become an entrepreneur, join a top company, or pursue research. If your capstone fits this and works well with everybody else, absolutely. OK, the next one is again from Anand, who says, what will be the next procedure after getting shortlisted through the first round? Let's so, wait for slides. We will have a few slides on this, so let's hang on to that. OK, OK, so we'll come to that later. Let me take a last question from Vivek, and we're back to our presentation. Vivek is asking, I'm already working as an ML engineer. How will this program help me? And you want to take this? Sure. So, uh, well, you didn't say what type of engineer. 
of course. But the whole point is, uh, let's assume you are not a computer science person. He's an ML engineer, machine learning engineer. Oh, this person is a machine learning engineer. Okay, wow. Um, that I think is fantastic. Uh, in fact, what we expect is if you are an ML engineer actually and actually work in the ML space, this program is really designed to uh, probably fast track your career in a huge way because then at least you have a basic appreciation of the what is required in ML. I'm going to assume that for now. And whether and I, and I say it not as a bias towards someone with ML knowledge, but a bias towards anybody who has spent time understanding what ML is all about. So I would encourage everyone on this call and who would want to apply here, learn that. So let's say you are a little bit of a leg up because you probably had a bit more time studying it. That's about all. But at the end of it, I mean, people who are going to just imagine, I mean, the power that you will have is you will actually know how to build a solution uh, for a viable organization end to end. That's what you learn here. As an ML engineer, you will probably be initially, uh, you will stick to certain components of programming uh, or for a particular company, for a particular project. But this will give you a chance of looking at a complete problem and perhaps prepare you for building a full solution. So you will, your position will completely change as an ML engineer. Okay, so we'll continue with the presentation and come back to the questions at the end. Shirinath, can you go to the next slide? Okay, so these are some of the organizations in our network and some of you were asking, uh, so these, this could be a subset of organizations where your capstone projects could come from, where you may sort of look at job opportunities, Google, Emphasis, Microsoft, Amazon, Netflix, BCG, Warburg, Pincus, Zomato, Schlumberger, Fractal, Helion, Roundglass, Actio, RPS, Incedo, InfoEdge, Innovate, Fusion Charts, BlueStack, Techman, Ranagaro. And I think the list is far bigger. We could only put some names here. Shirinath, keep going. Next one. 60 fellows is the size of the first batch, as we mentioned. We could take it up to 70. Uh, if we find enough worthy candidates, keep going. 60 fellows, and this is a little bit on the admissions process. Eligibility, again, sort of emphasizing undergrad degree in engineering, math, or science. It's not essential that you have a computer science degree, but we are looking for a competency in math, which is around probability, statistics, and linear algebra and some knowledge of programming, even if you've not done Python, right? As long as you've done some programming. Work experience of zero to five years, but we are now become much more flexible on this. We've really removed the upper cap, so you could even be working more, right? And this last one I've already mentioned, then stage one, you fill in the application form. It's designed to test your curiosity, your passion, creativity, academic credentials, then stage two, we call everybody for an in-person or a Skype interview. Our interviews are largely going to be in Delhi. So outside of Delhi, it's going to be Skype or let's see if there is a particular city from where we have strong interest. Our team may also come down and interview. And we're also going to do an online test to check on the knowledge on math and programming. Right. So that's the final selection. Uh, one of you had this question on the process. So step one, complete the application and submit it. The round one deadline is April 22nd, which is Monday. After you submit the form, we shortlist you. If you are shortlisted, then you come for the interview and the test, right? Once you clear both the interview and the test, then you are admitted, right? The scholarships you already know of, 20 full scholarships. So out of 60 people, 20 people don't pay any tuition. Another 20 pay half the tuition and another 20 pay 75% of the tuition. So every person is on a scholarship, but the, the degree of scholarship varies. Scholarships are, and we are going to be very transparent on that. Uh, the scholarships are dependent on merit and need. It's going to depend on your, you know, your ability to pay. Some people come from backgrounds where they can afford the, to pay. Some people cannot afford and we are very mindful of that. Be very mindful on how you are on merit, right? So it's a merit and need. We look at both. Next slide, Shina. 
Well, I think we're that's the end of the presentation. I strongly encourage you to apply in round one. And why is that? Because, you know, the class sort of fills up early. While we have three rounds, round one being April 22nd, round two being May 20, and round three being mid-June, uh, if we get enough strong applications in round one and round two, we may not have any seats left by round three, right? So I strongly encourage you to apply early. Similarly with scholarships. If we get enough applicants who deserve a full scholarship in round one, then that bucket sort of gets exhausted, right? So I strongly urge you to apply in round one. Uh, you still have two days. It's not a very lengthy application. Uh, it'll probably take you two hours to finish it, is my sense. Uh, but do a good job of the application, fill it in detail, answer every question. Uh, I do believe this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. If I could go back and do my education again, I would strongly look at a program like this. I do believe that technology is redefining businesses. Technology is redefining organizations. When I look at my own company, which is a classroom test prep company, our biggest challenge is how do we integrate technology into our business? When I speak to leaders in banking, in consulting, they're asking the same question. So today, if you can combine sensitization and understanding of technology and learn to apply that in the real world with upping your leadership quotient, I think you are a very, very differentiated professional, a professional who's most relevant in the 21st century. You have the opportunity to then accelerate your careers. You have the opportunity to pretty much jumpstart, to switch, to change, go in and do exciting things. You can build ventures. So as I mentioned that, you know, if some of us, this fellowship is created with this passion by, by some of us, because we believe that this is the sort of program we would have liked to attend, right? If you speak to a Hitesh at Nokri or a Pramod at Genpact or Neeraj at BCG, they would all feel, look, this is a program that we would like to attend. And this has been created with that sort of passion. So I, I'm going to end here. And we will now take questions. I have two immediate questions with me. The first is again from Anishkrit. Can we collaborate with people outside the program while creating a startup? If that startup eventually becomes our capstone project? Right. I think that's a great question, Anushkrit. I think you can. But all capstones are in teams of four, right? So we need to create a team of four within the fellowship. Your question seems to say, can you collaborate with people outside? Now, that's something probably I can't answer immediately. And although I don't know if you have a view on that. Um, so, so fundamentally, this is not the idea to you know start companies uh, in while being in the program uh, and making that part of the project. We can evaluate it. And uh, I'm not completely going to say yes quickly to it because first is the idea is for you to understand how to go about it. You are, if you want to be an entrepreneur, nobody can stop you from becoming an entrepreneur. Okay, and and this is not the end of your life. So this is we are talking about a capstone project for uh, literally for two months. That's all we are discussing. So I would not think too hard about this. Uh, if it is something that happens, if somebody helps you from outside, maybe that's good. But understand, this is a this is a educational program as much. So you, you will be evaluated and your evaluation will be on what work you do here. So just understand that. And if you want to do other things on the side, you're welcome to do that. Why we don't have to combine everything in one place. Okay, the next question is from Kanchan, uh, who's asking, can you talk about the fee of the fellowship? So the details of the fee, Kanchan, are also mentioned in the website. If when you go to plaksha.org and open the tech leaders program and go to the admission section, the fee is mentioned, but I can repeat it here. The tuition is 8.6 lakhs, hostel is 1.2. So the total fee is 9.8 lakhs. But as I said, 20 people don't pay any tuition. So that means they pay only for hostel. So that means for 20 students, 
it costs them only 1.2 lakhs per annum, which is really their hostel fee. 20 people are on a 50% tuition waiver. So that means they pay half the tuition plus they pay hostel. So they end up paying 5.5 lakhs and 20 people get a 25% tuition waiver. So they end up paying 7.65. I hope that is clear. But you can also go to the website and the admission section uh, to get the full details. Okay, now I think there's a last question. I'm still trying to figure out the name of the person. I think it comes from Advitya, who's saying, can lack of background in programming and math be covered by MOOCs and online courses? I would say absolutely yes, right? If you think your background is still lacking in math and, and programming, uh, we, if, if, we, if we see sufficient demonstrated interest, we can give you a conditional admission. And if you can demonstrate that during the two, three months till August 1, you've done enough moves and build that sort of profile, we are happy to admit you. Yeah. And, and I want to say this, I mean, frankly, it is all up to you. So if you prepare well and come back, come with that kind of knowledge and ability to succeed, then great. The point is, we don't want you to come and fail. Just understand that. That's the real point of all this request requirement. Otherwise, we don't need uh, that kind of requirements. I don't believe that to learn AIML or learn data sciences, to become a great entrepreneur, you have to have all of these pieces. But to succeed in the program, you probably need to know a good amount of math and certain amount of programming, which, of course, you will also be taught a bit on. Uh, so sometimes that becomes too hard to learn fast. So as Vineet says, that you can learn this before, then great. Absolutely. OK, Anna, Anand is asking another question that what will be the assessment attributes of the submitted applicants for shortlisting? So Anand, I would put it in sort of four buckets one is going to be your academic credentials right so just understanding your degree your gpa your academic background and some of it is also going to come from the programming test programming and math test so the one bucket of shortlisting is the academic bucket just sort of understanding your academic potential to make sure that you can you can take the rigor of the program I think the second bucket is really going to be your curiosity, creativity, what I sometimes also call the hunger in the belly. How eager you are to learn, right? What is your motivation to come for the program, right? Uh, are, are you thinking out of the box? What is your motivation to study here? That's second. So motivation, hunger, curiosity is sort of the second bucket. The third is which is more internal to us, where we will analyze your fit to the program, right? Now, are you coming for the right reasons? We are going to try to assess that, are you the right applicant, so to say, which may be a combination of one and two. And we will also interview you to understand that, right? Are you the right fit for the program? Will you be able to, as Anando said, not fail and do well in the program, right? Do you sort of meet the objectives that the program has been created for. So I would put it in three buckets, your academic potential and your academic credentials, your motivation, creativity, hunger, and the third sort of your fit to the program. So is your question. And though if you want to add something. No, I think we are absolutely, I think most of the things you have covered. I just want to say that, you know, application, that's why we asked you some leading questions to see how you approach the problem, how, how you approach the questions, and talk about how you're going to fit well. And uh, rest of it is only a matter of making sure that, again, you can succeed. That's all. Right. I, I do want to mention that uh, we do want the class to be as gender balanced. So we would, I would highly encourage uh, all of our female applicants to apply, right? So we are looking at a good balance. So I would encourage all of our female applicants to apply. So Anand has another question. What if an applicant has a gap year? That's no problem at all, Anand. Gap years are all fine. 
we should just be able to explain what happened in that gap year. That's not a problem at all, right? I think we are sort of coming to an end. There is one question. I think okay, there are a couple of more. There is a question from Priyanshi. I have a five-year experience of working in the startups as product manager and software engineer. Graduated from IIT Roorkee. I would like to know what are the major takeaways for me from the program. So Priyanshi, I think if you were really listening through, I hope you got some of it. You already have five years. You have a good academic background. You're already a software engineer. But as Anando said, I think this program can sort of really accelerate your career. Give you exposure to great faculty. It can give you exposure to great projects. Probably you already know how to apply some of your learnings in the real world, but it can accelerate that to the next level. So I would think that this is sort of, you know, something that you do after five years that can jumpstart and accelerate your career, and really give you a very very wide view, right? Another, you want to add something? Yeah, the only other thing I will add is if you have already been working with startups. you probably understand the culture right and you understand that the there is no one answer for a startup person that this is your fixed role and what so you would have probably learned some of it but what this program will give you is also exposure to some terrific uh, entrepreneurs and so maybe one uh, one thing that you might end up doing is start a company of your own in this space so that is an easy path the other option is of course if you want to say that you know what i have done startups for 5 years now i want to go back to a company and a large company may be quite reluctant to take you in being unsure of your intentions this program will give you the, all of that background that you can jump into a really powerful company and work in a very very interesting space so so all of those things automatically happen for you i also think that we are living in an era where learning has become lifelong so i honestly believe the one thing i most wish to do is that if I, if i could take two years or one year off from my business and just go and study uh and it's far easier to do that when you are younger i can just tell you that from experience so some of you if you are getting an opportunity to just go and learn right i mean this is going to be an exciting cohort of people exciting cohort of faculty create opportunities uh if you are getting an opportunity to learn one thing i can say from experience is do grab it right i hope that answers your question priyanshi we try to answer it to the best of our ability the last one uh, somebody just remind me and we are almost at 6 pm is from shadab will we be given options to choose from capstone projects or will we be on our own to come up with ideas Oh, so you will be given options i think we'll put up a list of all capstone projects that we've created uh, people can sort of apply to some of the capstones we will have a process of fitting in the relevant fellows with the relevant projects what that process is we still need to distill it but yes i mean you know you don't have to force it uh, if you have a great capstone or, but capstones are also related to organizations so an idea sometimes is not enough uh the idea has to come in the background of data and organization but clearly you will have choices anything from you nando yeah the only thing i want to say i mean yes you, you can you will first of all have choices of uh, and all of that but if you have an idea that's fine but if you say that okay i know this company who wants to offer we will evaluate it from the con in the context of the program uh, we will not again say yes just like that we'll go through a process of discussion and if it makes sense then absolutely so yeah we'll have flexibility of all types okay i think we are at 6:01 pm and done but somebody just reminds me so this is the last question from advitya thanks a lot for the answers if we can have a webinar with the faculty then it would be great okay that's a great suggestion advitya we will try to schedule one we can't get all 20 faculty on the webinar but we try to get one or two that great suggestion uh, yeah and one thing i want to say i mean once we have shortlisted candidates from the applications probably uh, for them we will be uh, it will be much easier for us to organize a webinar so please go ahead and apply and 
then hopefully you'll have a chance to really to get a chance to speak and directly interact with the faculty member. Okay, on that note, uh, we will end this webinar. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, still two days to go for the application form, so please do submit it. Uh, just reminding all of you that scholarships for early applicants. Thank you and look forward to actually seeing some of you in the class. Yeah, look forward to it. Great. Thanks. Thank you.